Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Tuesday, October 22nd, 2019. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also keep in mind that these, uh, these readings are um, timeless. Yeah, time is an illusion. Energies are fluid. So just because this is dated for the 22nd doesn't mean it has to resonate only on the 22nd. Whenever you find this reading and it resonates for you, that is the message for you at that time. Yeah. Happy Tuesday. Um, so I do have a bit of a pre-shuffle here. You have the Queen of Pentacles. Her back is turned. Okay. And overall energy here is the Five of Cups with the Five of Swords. Luckily, however, it's the side of the card where there is a retreat or a um, a surrender, even, you could say. Um, and to be quite honest, surrender feels like the right word for it. However, as I'm saying that, there is a little bit of contention. Um, I almost don't want to say that. And maybe that's just like my ego kind of flaring up and be like, no, we don't surrender. Rawr. But at the same time, this does feel like a surrender, especially with this five of cups energy. Now, the way that this is oriented, we see this side of the card here is this person is um, is focused, is looking at the three cups that have spilled. OK, and. I'm hearing, yeah, reminiscent. This, this, this is a reminiscent energy. It definitely is a reminiscent energy, but it's not the good Six of Cups type of reminiscent energy. It's more about um, focused on the pain and the loss of the past. Now, with the Queen of Pentacles energy here, um, I, it feels like a good thing uh, what i what i'm getting here is i kind of feel like and this is probably a, a major part of this hermit energy that we're all in um lately but it's contemplative for the most part that's what i'm getting from this queen of Pent pentacles energy i feel like she and this is this is not gender specific all right so uh, you can be a man and still resonate with the queen of pentacles energy but she it feels like she's facing the depths of how she's allowed herself to be taken advantage of in the past and that's where we get the retreat energy from with the five of swords because it, it seems like you know over and over she may have been put been putting herself in a situation in which she was trying to be helpful she was by trying to be the nurturing caring compassionate motherly um abundant type energy that she is okay and so um for perspective, if you are a man, okay, and you identify and you identify more with masculine energy than feminine energy, you can still resonate with these type with this type of energy, with this energy of the Queen of Pentacles. She, she represents honesty, truth, groundedness, abundance. She is a, a bit of a motherly figure. She is a motherly figure, but you could, in terms of like gender non-binary or whatnot, you could think of it. It's just a, an, instead of a mother, a parent. All right. Um, abundant, uh, nurturing, caring, compassionate, you know, wants to, wants to be there for her family, her friends, the people that she loves, the people that she cares about, you know. Um, but the thing about the Queen of Pentacles is she does not like being taken advantage of. Um, and she does definitely does not un, uh, appreciate having her kindness being taken for weakness. And sorry, my lips are dry. <laughs> And with this Five of Swords energy, it's exactly what that was. All right? And you could definitely look at that as a lose-lose situation. Now, for the people that were taking advantage of this energy, it may not necessarily look like so much of a lose situation because I kind of get the feeling that they're, that <laughs> they have this, uh, I just get the feeling that they're like, oh, well, we could find another one. Yeah, all right. You probably could. Um, but you lost a real one. That's for sure. You lost a real one. And you can only go for so long 
cycling through people to take advantage of before people start to catch on and then you're royally fucked, basically. All right? So eventually it's going it, to... So and, and, and I say that to say eventually the karma is going to catch up to you. And it's really not even a situation of like crime and punishment. It's literally reaping what you've sown. It's literally getting back what you have put out, right? The energy is going to come back to you in some way. But as far as this queen of pentacles goes, she's had enough. She's not, she's not, <laughs> she is not doing that. This does feel, this does, I'm not going to lie, um, especially with this Five of Cups energy here, this really does feel like um, someone is really kind of closing them off, closing closing themselves off in a probably a pretty major way. I just heard that. It depends. You know, it, it, it depends. It, you take it as it resonates. Um, you know, place it in your life where it fits. This is, you can look at this as like a spectrum, okay? But... Um, Yeah, this Queen of Pentacles has had enough. She's had a, she's had enough of having her heart broken. She's had enough of having her being used for her resources. She's had enough of being taken advantage of having her kindness being taken for weakness. It almost feels like she's pretty jaded at this point. And I don't believe this is something that could really will really stick. I do feel like she's gonna come out of it at some point, uh, feeling better about herself, having gotten over the pain of whatever this Five of Cups energy is, because the beauty of the Five of Cups is that all is not lost. You still have two cups behind her, behind, yeah, all right, behind her, or behind the person, right? Um, and I do kind of feel like that, that could be a relationship a balanced, harmonious relationship. But I don't feel like this Queen of Pentacles is really all that ready for it yet. Because she's still dealing with the heartbreak from, from the, the grief, the sorrow, the guilt, the shame, the pain, the embarrassment, whatnot, whatever. Whatever this Five of Cups represents for you, you're still dealing with it. Um, and I'm getting that you're taking a really hard look at all of this. Um, and that's where kind of the stubbornness or sternness of the Queen of Pentacles can kind of work against you. At some point, you're just going to have to stop trying to make so much sense of it and just let it go and move on. Um, I'm not trying to rush you into that. Um, and also, you don't need to punish yourself. That kind of feels like this too. You don't, there's no need, there is, there is absolutely no need to punish yourself. This Queen of Pentacles energy may be a little bit reversed right now. I don't have, I'm not reading reversals in this deck. So it, she could be a little bit reversed right now. Um, she might be really being very, very hard on herself for, for allowing X, Y, and Z to go down. Like she's straight up taking responsibility for it, for whatever she's facing right now. No, there's no doubt about that. She's not trying to blame anybody other than herself, really. But that's a detriment. That's not always, that's not also necessary, okay? You don't have to beat yourself up about this. You don't really have to, mm, you don't have to shoot yourself in the foot like that, <laughs> okay? All right. Okay, cool. I'm gonna leave it there and I'm gonna, I'm gonna move forward now. We're going to get to the rest of the message here for the collective uh, for our Tuesday, October 22nd. You guys, October's almost over. Like, Halloween is next week. Can we just talk about that for a second? Like, we're almost done with 2019. Holy shit. <laughs> and you know what I say to that? Good riddance. <laughs> I'm kidding. Or maybe I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> All right, guys. Let me give this one more shuffle. Okay. Here we go. Let's see what else we've got for today's collective reading. Hi, spirit. 
Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Tuesday, October 22nd, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, we're giving this three shuffles. No, not three. I'm sorry. Five shuffles. We're giving this five shuffles. One. Two. Five shuffles here for the collective. Three. Oh, oh. There we go. <laughs> Four. And five. Hmm. Alrighty, here we go. Let's see what we've got. Best messages, please, Spirit. What would you like to discuss with us today? What would you like to discuss with us today? Please, Spirit. My eyes are closed. Bear with me. Let's see what we get. The Nine of Cups and the world with the Six of Swords. All right. That's a good thing. Oh. Oh. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> wow you guys okay overall energy is the knight of cups with the five of cups again but this time it's the back side of the card and you remember how i was saying i was feeling like i was feeling like the two cups behind this person in the five of cups is a relationship on the horizon coming and look you have this rose uh there you, i think you, i hope you guys can see that you see that red rose right there that's a symbol of life rebirth and, and it's a rose so this could be love and then look at what you have here you have the nine of cups with the king of cups you have the world the six of swords and the wheel of fortune okay now it's the side of the wheel whoops i'm destroying things in my apartment you guys um it's the <laughs> Sorry. It's the side of the Wheel of Fortune that I'm actually not too familiar with. Okay, normally we've been getting this side of the card, which is, um, this is the magician here. Okay, and this speaks to consciously creating a change in your life, a change in cycle, whatnot, whatever, as above, so below. But on this side, you have, um, it looks like a dog and a lizard with a sphinx. And I'm not quite sure what that exactly means, so I do want to read it. A zoo won't read it. Okay. Huh. Um, you know, I'm gonna read this whole thing. Under a pitiless desert sky, a sphinx rests her paw on the wheel of fortune. The wheel is carved with sacred and esoteric symbols that speak of the great mysteries of life, death, and rebirth. Two Egyptian gods beside the wheel, snake-headed Typhon, who brings chaos and destruction, and jackal-headed Anubis, who, uh, who accompanies the dead into the afterlife and beyond. Both are in Greek dress and have human bodies, denoting a union with the Greek god Hermes, who is a guide of souls. Hermes adds discernment and intelligence to the powers of Typhon and Anubis, so that our lives turn upon the wheel so I'm sorry, so, as, so that as our lives turn upon the wheel, we gain wisdom with each turning. And it says when you get this card in a reading, when you get this side in a reading, it says the wheel of fortune cannot be halted in its timeless turning. To be born is to be on the wheel. The two sides of this card show two approaches to this inalterable fact. This side speaks of the great mysteries of the wheel, which can be pondered for a lifetime or many lifetimes and still never be fully comprehended. 
The Sphinx guards the secrets of destiny. Acceptance of this brings peace. Struggling to understand what is beyond mortal understanding brings despair. Okay, that's cool. I mean, what I feel like here, the, the what's this? What is that? Oh, look, the High Priestess. Interesting. That actually, it's very interesting that um, that caught my eye. Because it's the backside of the High Priestess in which we're being let in on her secrets, right? Um, but what I'm getting here, what I was about to say with the, with the Wheel of Fortune is... Um, what this, what I feel like this means for our reading here is that you're on this wheel, you're turning with fate. I mean, this is going, the wheel is turning, okay? And you're learning about life. You're learning your own lessons about life. You're gaining the secrets and yet you're not getting everything, which is fine. You're not really meant to be getting anything, but the wheel of fortune is turning, okay? And especially because I'm being taken back to the pre-shuffle energies where we had the queen of pentacles and she's, it feels like she's in a very contemplative state. Well, at, as the Queen of Pentacles goes through her cycles, goes through this situation, goes through her healing, really, the wheel turns. And you have this nighttime scene of both the Nine of Cups and the King of Cups. I really do feel like a King of Cups is coming in. As you, as the wheel turns, <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm laughing because I'm thinking of, um, I'm thinking of the days of our lives as I said that, as the wheel turns. No, wait, wasn't there another soap opera, As the World Turns? <laughs> I, I don't remember, whatever, it doesn't matter. I, that was a silly tangent. But as this wheel turns, okay, you're going through your emotions, you're getting through the heartbreak, you're getting through the pain, you're learning your lessons, and you're moving forward with your life. And as that happens, wish fulfillment is gonna come in. Because if you hold this desire, you're going to receive it. If you want to have a counterpart, a soulmate, whatnot, whatever, you're gonna receive that. But there are some things that you have to go through first to get you ready for it, right? And, and before we go any further, let's talk about the Queen of Pentacles for a second, because it feels like this Queen of Pentacles needed to go through certain situations to help her realize her value, number one. Even though she, she really kind of already understood her value, she didn't understand it quite enough to not allow people to take advantage of her. There is a fine line between being of service and being used. And it, sometimes it takes time to really understand what that fine line is and to also not be afraid to enforce that. And I feel like that was a big part of the, the issue in the past in which she was being taken advantage of, right? Or at least the energy of what the Queen of Pentacles represents was being taken advantage of. Again, this has nothing to do with gender, okay? Um, but <clears throat> look, looky here. It looks like that cycle is absolutely closing, coming to a close. Six of Swords, the Wheel of Fortune, not the Wheel of Fortune, the world, okay? The Six of Swords is about healing. And you do have, you do have the side of the card in which these individuals seem to be coming out of some sort of cave, which there was, there's another card in this deck that depicts something like that. It is the um, Nine of Wands in which an individual is being coaxed into a cave by a feminine figure, by a woman. It's a man that's on that card is being coaxed in, and the man is battered and bruised and the woman is coaxing him into this cave. The cave is indicative of a birthing chamber, um, solitude, a healing chamber. You could even call it maybe like a hyperbolic chamber, whatnot, whatever. But what we have here are two people emerging from a cave traveling, moving from rough waters to calmer waters. And with that comes the world, which is the end of a cycle. And as this, end, as this cycle ends, your fate, your destiny changes. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be completely 100% honest with you. I'm gonna, and I wanna share how this kind of like, how I've come to understand this in my life. Before I went through the whole like twin flame activation, crazy, insane, bullshit <laughs> situation, I was 
very attracted to toxic energies. And it wasn't even that person that closed out that cycle for me. It, me it, it took me dealing with that person and then <clears throat> removing myself from that area, that situation, that environment and everything like that, but still going through the process energetically and then aligning with other people that also exhibited that energies before I, those energies, before I, st I really realized, before I really looked at it and I put two and two together and I, I connected the dots and I was like, oh, that's what this is. And now the people that I find myself attracted to or the energies that I find myself attracted to are completely different, like completely different. They're, I mean, they're way more humble. They're way more awakened, enlightened, I guess you could say. Like I, I have a much, diff, a much more different preference now than I did in the past. Has this person come through yet? Well, no, I mean, I, I, I no, but it doesn't matter because I'm aware of the energies that I was allowing into my life at that time and how I kept perpetuating all of that. And so then I've been in the process of really just releasing it and, and, and spending time with myself and nurturing myself and giving that time back to myself and, and, and giving that love and care and compassion that I would like to have with somebody else externally to myself. And that's, there you go, there's that hermit moment, this, this extended hermit season that we're all in. That's, what, that's really what we're, we're healing. We're, 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 we're spending time with ourselves. I like to describe it as I'm cultivating a better relationship with myself right now. And it's wonderful. Don't get me wrong, I would love to have a partner, but at the same time, I am absolutely in no rush for that. No rush. I'm really in no rush anymore. Because I don't, because I don't want to just have a relationship to have a relationship. I don't want to be, have a partner just to say I have a partner. I don't. I, I, it's in in no way is this a codependent situation, okay. But hey, if somebody wants to come forward and like maybe we want to, great. Let's try it out. But I'm not gonna be chasing after anything or anyone. I'm not really not even gonna be going out looking for it. If it happens, it happens. When it happens. Let's say it that way, guys. Let's say it that way. When it happens, it will happen. Not if, not if, but when. Wheel of Fortune. It's really only a matter of time. Okay? But you're still going through this healing process. And I just heard there is a lot to heal from. Because this has a lot. This, isn't, this is more than just an immediate situation that happened like in the immediate past, blah, 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 or whatnot, or with just your last ex or with your twin flame or whatever, how, whatever labels you're putting, whatever. This could extend lifetimes. This could be a, cir a circumstance that you dealt with your whole lifetime in this incarnation. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, this is a very good thing. Please take your time in this energy, in this cycle, but please, please, please do not beat yourself up about anything, all right? It's all just a learning process. It's all just meant to help us grow and expand, okay? Even if you're a, a, a cross watcher, okay, and you're just whatever. Even if you're a cross watcher and you've done some things to some people that are less than honorable, still, don't beat yourself up about it. Just learn from it and change. That's really all that matters, <laughs> okay? Of course, if you don't want to change, that's on you. But if you do want to change, then make that change. As Michael Jackson used to say. Still says. Quite frequently. <laughs> okay. Let's, um, let's get some clarity. Let's look a little deeper here into these energies. 
Um, 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 all right. I, I, I might do both. I do kind of want to do both. We'll see what happens. I'm going to start here, though, with the Wheel of... Not the Wheel of Fortune. I'm sorry. The World with the Six of Swords. I want to get a little bit more clarity on this for you guys because I do feel like some of you, like, when... Even though we're in this extended period of hermitism and many of us are just like, you know what? This is great. I think I could spend the rest of my life here. <laughs> I really do think I could spend the rest of my life here. There are some of you that are kind of like, but when are we going to come out of this? I mean, I feel like some of you are even questioning if this is even healthy. Yes, of course it is. Of course it's healthy. You're taking time to yourself. You are loving yourself. You are nurturing yourself. You are healing. Of course it's healthy. Of course. I'll give this one more shuffle, but then and then we'll see what... I just want to get a little bit of a deeper understanding of these energies for you guys here, okay? So the wheel, gosh, all right, fine. We're going to clarify that too, because you're asking, I can tell, but that's okay. We're going to start with the world and the six of swords here, all right? Let's get a little bit of clarity here. The world and the six of swords. Just a little deeper understanding of what these energies are, please, spirit. The ace of wands. That's interesting. Okay. Ah, looky here. Look, see, there's the high priestess again. Okay, overall energy. The Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> okay, all right. But you see here, oh wow, that's a big old stack. Um, you have the Ace of Wands, you have the Five of Wands, and then you have the Seven of Pentacles. Lessons learned, all right? You have the High Priestess and the Hierophant. Counterparts masculine and feminine energy you have the four of wands yes four of wands ace of pentacles and judgment so it really does feel like you have come to the balance of masculine and feminine energies these are counterparts here the high priestess and the hierophant are counterparts and what i'm feeling with this is you've you've got the lessons of these two individuals quite strongly under your belt, which is allowing you to really close out a big, big major cycle, okay? And really change the, 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 the direction of your life, the trajectory here, yes? I mean, look at this, Ace of Wands, let's, let's, actually, let's talk about this for a second. Ace of Wands, Five of Wands, Seven of Pentacles. It seems like you have learned the lesson, you have learned a lesson in I'm hearing the value in the in differing of opinion. Which would make sense because you have the hierophant here and the hierophant talks about codependency, no not codependency, uh conformity, social norms and all that good stuff, right? Good stuff. Okay, fine. Um, I'm hearing individualism is key here. Individuality is key here. Not allowing yourself to be overthrown by the masses that just want to control you, that want to use your energy, use your abundance, use your light for their own benefit and not really give anything back to you. And, and thus you're moving in a new direction here. Ace of Wands is the inspiration to move in a new direction despite what everyone has, may have to say about it, despite the differing of opinion outside of you. You've learned this lesson. Now, when I say differing of opinion there, that's a conformist point of view. Like you're not doing things the normal way, so what's wrong with you? That kind of energy, the normal way. The hell is normal? Fuck out of here with that normal C. <laughs> Okay, so as a result, Four of Wands, Ace of Pentacles, Judgment, you've woken up. You're balanced. You've got a good spiritual standing. You've got a good solid foundation within yourself here, Four of Wands, create, which is leading you to a brand new cycle, a brand new opportunity, a new um, opportunity in life physically. Yes, Ace of Pentacles, Judgment is the wake-up call. Wow, okay, you have more here you have the five of cups the seven of wands and the queen of wands 
You also have the Three of Cups here. And then on this side, we have... Oh my god, you've got to be kidding me. Oh my god, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop being so damn dramatic. <laughs> and I'm going to show you what this is. On this side is the Five of Cups, the Seven of Wands, the Queen of Wands, and the Three of Cups. Okay, so what this is saying to me is here, despite the heartbreak, right, despite the turmoil, the pain, the, the, the misery, the, the guilt, the shame, uh, the, the, the sorrow, you've come into a deep sense of self-confidence, or at least you're coming into that, okay, and you're guarding your, your, your <laughs> boundaries, boundaries. All right. Three of Cups also, the boundaries is, is indicative, is represented by the Seven of Wands. The Three of Cups is uh, the union of body, mind, and spirit here. And what I'm getting with this is despite the pain, despite the heartbreak, Five of Cups, you're, you're pulling yourself together. You are pulling yourself together. And I'm even getting an energy of celebration, like celebrating yourself with this Three of Cups energy. Maybe that's the universe celebrating you with you. And then there were two other cards that fell out on the other side of the table. And look at what they are. The King of Wands and the Page of Swords. Both in reverse, though. So look, guys, we do have the counterparts. All right? We have the Hierophant with the, with the High Priestess. Those are counterparts. And now we have the King and the Queen of Wands. But King of Wands has the Page of Swords. Sips tea. Because some of you know what that means. Many of you know what that means. The King of Wands is watching you. I have no comment. I'm moving forward. Um, <laughs> I have no comment. because I'm gonna start popping off at the mouth and I really don't need to do that. <laughs> so, instead. Instead. Now, now here's the thing, you guys, here's the thing. Because if you are dealing with a counterpart, we'll say, we'll, we'll even go so far as to say twin flame, right? Because, I mean, as, I mean, for me as a reader, when I started doing twin flame readings, I, would, I saw the king and the queen of wands as the divine feminine and the divine masculine energies, right? The counterparts here. Mainly because the wands represent spirituality. They also represent uh, creativity. Um, and twin flame, the twin flame journey is a very spiritually oriented circumstance, right? I forgot where I was going with this. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Um, there, see, the, but the Wheel of Fortune is here twice, right? So there's a big change that's happening. So this King of Wands that is probably watching, that is watching, <laughs> okay? I mean, that's pretty fucking obvious, right? He could change, guys. He could change. And he could come back to you. He or she, we're just talking, I'm just using, I'm using the pronoun of he because we're talking about the divine masculine energy or we're talking about masculine energies. But that has nothing to do with gender, okay? This person could come back to you as a completely different person. King of Cups, Nine of Cups, Wheel of Fortune. And you see, that's one of those things that you're never going to understand. You're never going to be able to understand that in human form. Especially if certain things went down in your relationship with this person, keep in mind, we don't have to be talking about twin flames, okay? We don't. We could be talking about any, any sort of partnership in which you two are evenly matched. You are counterparts. I'm not saying you're the same. I'm saying you are equal, okay? Equal in stature, equal in energy, equal in abundance, equal in 
ability to manifest whatnot whatever but you 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 um complement each other one embodies the feminine aspect one embodies the masculine aspect whatnot whatever in however many configurations that could possibly be which are infinite okay so don't get caught up on that but you two complement each other or you're the mirror aspects of each other or you are the counterparts to each other right and no matter how what kind of fucked up shit went down on in your journey this person could completely change, could come back to you as a completely different person, and you probably would never be able to consciously understand that. And really, the only reason I'm saying that, you guys, is number one, I'm trying to be practical, I'm trying to be logical, I'm trying not to get too, like, emotionally charged about it and start queen of swordsing like crazy and being you know, raw, you know what I mean? I'm trying to be logically, uh, trying to be logical, I'm trying to be balanced here, okay? And I'm trying to give you as much information as possible, right? Also, you have the Wheel of Fortune here twice. Massive change. But also keep in mind that it could be com a completely different person too. It could be a completely different person. And, and in, in that case, maybe that's why this, this, this King of Wands is in reverse here. Because homie's still watching you, but ain't doing nothing to come back, ain't doing nothing to change. Ooh, and that's why maybe I was picking maybe that's why I was picking up on the cross watcher. Again, I have no comment. This guy is in reverse here. I'm not sure why he's in reverse. Maybe we should maybe we should look into that. Why is this because why is why are you why are you in reverse and yet you're still watching? That's my question. <laughs> why? I might be opening up a can of worms with this. So what I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look into it. I want to get more. Why are you reversed here? Why is this king of wands reversed? I mean, it could be, it could be one of two things. It could be this person is staying as they are and is just watching you, keeping tabs on you, is watching you under the under the guise of, oh, well, I'm just keeping tabs. I'm just trying to make sure they're not trying to like do anything crazy, blah, blah, blah. All the while knowing that they're watching you because they love you or they know that they're your counterpart. They know who you are to each other, right? But they're, they're lying and saying, oh, I'm just trying to make sure I'm just keeping tabs. <laughs> or it could be that... This person is coming out of this egoic state here, this narcissistic egoic state, and is, is learning, is trying to learn. Or it could be that they're not watching you at all. Yeah, I just heard, yeah, that isn't true. That's not, that's not what this is. They're blocked. They are, yeah. Oh my God, yes, they are blocked. Look, the Queen of Wands has the Seven of Wands. The Seven of Wands is boundaries, blockage. She's, pit she's hurt. Five of Cups. <sighs> I do want to clarify this a little bit more though. King of Wands, Page of Swords. Why are you reversed here? What is this? What is this energy? Page of Wands, I'm sorry, Page of Swords. King of Wands. What is this, please, Spirit? Please help us understand what this is. And then we're going to go into Spirit's... Oh, boy. The Empress. I knew it with the Four of Pentacles. I knew it! And the King of Pentacles. There you go. There is the counterpart to the Queen of Pentacles now. I knew it. Four of Pentacles. I, God. Ugh. I knew that was going to come out. The Four of Pentacles is an energy of hoarding, miserly energy. And when I was out, when I was looking at it, and I was feeling, I was like, "Why are? Why is this King of Wands in reverse?" I was seeing the Four of Pentacles in my head, which is needing, holding on to something, needing to let go of it. But it came out with the Empress. That's the Divine Feminine. This guy is, this person, this guy, the King of Wands, is holding on to the Empress 
for dear life, but is being stubborn and is not wanting to change in certain cases. Now, to be fair, maybe that is really difficult. Maybe this person is so far wrapped up into their, to the lives that they've created for themselves now that they have no choice but to stay as they are, even though they may want to change. But they also know that they can't be with you if that's what they're going to do. And so they're still holding on to you for dear life, rec fully recognizing, fully recognizing, okay, the Empress energy here, the divine feminine energy here. Now, also, 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 the Empress does represent abundance, unconditional love. So there could be an energy of holding on to this situation, fully knowing that there is enough abundance in the universe to help change something. But I'm still a little unclear on that Four of Pentacles. Still a little unclear on that Four of Pentacles. I mean, I could keep clarifying that over and over. Um, I don't think I want to. I'm being pulled to the Golden Universal Tarot. So I want to get Spirit's take on this. Good golly. Excuse me. All right. Um, I want to get Spirit's take on this, but they're asking me to have a specific question. I want to know what the, I want to know what's going on with the Empress and the Four of Pentacles here, Spirit. Like, what is this? Why are they holding on like this? Why? Why are they holding on like this? They just said, you're, it's your divine counterpart. Knight of Cups. We have the Knight of Cups twice now. They're trying to figure out a way to, to approach this situation. Page of Cups. I'm sorry. Knight of Cups making an offer. The Emperor. God bless. Do you remember when I was, I was just shuffling and I said, why are they holding on like this? And I, and I heard them say, this is your divine counterpart. We have three instances, the emperor and the empress. The King and the Queen of Wands. The High Priestess and the Hierophant. Three instances. Three is a master number. And can I tell you guys something? Uh, I just heard, go ahead. <laughs> um, I did a pre-shuffle this morning that in that was none other than the lovers and the six of cups but i didn't take it because i was like you know what met spirit we're not talking about love right now okay so let's not and they were like okay and so i reshuffled and that queen of pentacles came out fast forward about 44 minutes and look at what we're talking about and spirit's like <laughs> Oops. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I love it. I'm, I love it. That's hilarious. What's the overall energy here? The three of pentacles. Okay. All right. All right, you guys. Look. Look. Y'all, I am not making this up. Okay? You have watched me. <laughs> you have watched me. Pull these cards right in front of your faces. I am not making this up. This person is changing. 
I wish you could see my. <laughs> this person is changing. Three of Pentacles is a card of self mastery. It's also a card of teamwork, but it's also a card of building. Building what? Where is it? Where is it? A foundation. Four of Pentacles. Sips coffee. <laughs> okay. All right, fine. Okay, fine. Enough of that. Oh, looky here. Look, look at what's showing itself now. The Eight of Pentacles. Working hard. Working really, really hard. Oh, no. You guys, we have four instances. I'm sorry, we have four instances of the counterparts in the King and the Queen of Pentacles. Because the Queen of Pentacles came out first in the pre-shuffle and now here's the king of pentacles while we're talking about this masculine energy here this is a little bit of a mind-blowing reading i'm not gonna lie i'm really not gonna lie i'm gonna close this out with oracle guidance and i'm actually gonna use the light worker oracle today light worker oracle Let's see what we've got. Four, two dazels. Okay. Here we go. Oracle guidance, please, spirit. Okay, okay, all right, okay. Card number two, second ray of wisdom. I don't think I've ever drawn this card in all the time that I've had this deck that I've used it. I haven't really been using it very often lately. I used it a ton last year, but okay, interesting. The second ray of wisdom is a consciousness of loving wisdom straight from the heart of the universe. It amplifies the magnetic power of attraction empowering you to pull into your life all that is needed for your life's work. It brings the opportunity to heal, restore, and understand through the power of love and the light of ancient wisdom. The spiritual master known as the Buddha is with you now to help you fully receive and integrate the blessings of this ray of light from the universe. That is actually, oof, okay, that is a, Pretty strong message for the feminines out there that are still in this resentful energy. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and I don't and I'm not saying that in a in a in a in a way that's supposed to like shame you or anything. You need to work because the Queen of Pentacles, let me tell you. Let me tell you. The Queen of Pentacles can be resentful as all get out. And I was saying, it feels like that Queen of Pentacles energy is a little bit reversed. But it's naturally. This is a, it, it's not like you're a completely out of balance and you need to put, get your shit together. No, 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 no. This is, you know exactly how unbalanced you are right now because of the elements that you've been through in your life. And yes, you need to pull your shit together, but you are consciously aware of that and you're working on it. And you're a little resentful right now. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Is nothing wrong with it. But the unconditional love that Buddha represents. Oh my God. Is part of the, of the message here for some of the feminines. That's what I was picking up on. But then I saw this. Hold on. Give me a second. I want to read more of this card to you guys. But this one paragraph just pointed itself out to me. And I was like, you got to be kidding. But I... <laughs> <laughs> but I want to see if there's more ahead of it. Um, okay, I'm just going to read what I'm seeing. The second ray of wisdom is the energy of the open and loving heart of the universe. It is inclusive, drawing all things towards it with an invisible magnetism. It is gifted to you at this time to help you attract into your life the people, opportunities, and teachings that will help you succeed in your life mission. 
This ray will help you focus your consciousness in your heart. It will bring to consciousness any unresolved matters of the heart for healing. <clears throat> this includes not only issues of relationship, but also any issues around trusting your heart to lead you. This ray will help, you, he, will help heal your heart in an affirming and nurturing way. The challenge with this ray, given that it is so magnetic and attractive, is learning to discern and say no when you need to. Imagine a fisherman who casts a very wide net and catches most of the ocean in it. Not everything is useful or even desired by the fisherman. While some things are grateful, gratefully accepted by the fisherman, other things are best returned to the ocean where they belong. Being able to trust in future abundance is, a por is important. You will not need to hold on to every opportunity, person, or situation out of fear of loss or lack. That is exactly what we were talking about with the Queen of Pentacles in the very beginning. Instead, you are learning to live in true abundance and flow. Practice feeling comfortable in letting go as well as receiving. Trust that the universe has all that you want and need in unlimited supply. The universe will truly provide for you, dear child of light. Okay, I wanna read this last paragraph. When the Buddha comes to you, comes into your world, <clears throat> he brings the gift of wisdom. That includes openness to all that is without judgment. This might be the struggle that will eventually be revealed as a blessing in disguise. It might be the challenge that causes you to grow into readiness for the next phase of your divine life mission, Wheel of Fortune twice. You can't see it now anymore because it's on, it was, um, in the wild unknown tarot and we have the king of pentacles now but the wheel of fortune came out twice you have the world here <clears throat> you also have judgment which is the wake up call which is ascension which is rising above good golly y'all all right well i'm going to leave that there but i want before i do i want to say one thing don't worry do not worry about who could be coming forward towards you, whoever this King of Cups is, with this Nine of Cups and the Wheel of Fortune here, do not worry about who this is, okay? Ultimately, what I feel like is happening here is, universe is playing matchmaker. So as long as you stay in your abundance, as long as you stay in your alignment, excuse me, not abundance, yes, abundance, but if as long as you stay in your alignment to what it is you truly desire, the universe is gonna line you up with someone that will fulfill that for you. Now, if, you're, if this counterpart does come back into your life and immediately you can tell that their energy is no different, they're still in this negative King of Wands type energy, then obviously you have the right, hello, discernment, you have the right to say no, okay? You always have the right to say no. But if, they've, if, if, they've show, if they're showing signs of change and awareness and awakening and I want to say adulthood, <laughs> okay, if they have signs of change here and the energy feels right, it feels like you vibe together much better, by all means, go for it. Take your time. Don't rush into anything, but go for it. People can change, all right? That's not the issue. Obviously, you're changing, aren't you? People can change. But do their actions line up with their words? That's the test. Do their actions line up with this change that they seem to be exhibiting? Or is it all just an act? Sometimes that's gonna take a little bit longer than an immediate reaction. Sometimes you're gonna have to like, I don't know, go, go through the motions with this person for a little bit to really see if they've really changed, but But also keep in mind that this could be a completely different person, completely different person who is much better aligned to you. So don't focus on the external situation or circumstance of a specific person. Don't focus on it. Instead, just focus on what it is you desire out of life and the type of energy that you would like to allow into your life, the type of energy that you know that you want to receive. And stay in alignment with that, nothing else. Don't worry about the details. Let the universe handle that for you, okay? I mean, it's obviously they are. Wheel of Fortune. Obvious they are. <laughs>
All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. I love you guys so very much. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye.